Nick Saban has retired. Finally, he's gone, and Kalen DeBoer is the new Alabama head coach. That's why I'm playing Washington versus Alabama for this gameplay, and this game did not disappoint. It was a close one from the start to finish, so you're going to want to watch this one all the way through to the end because you just got to see it. Plus, our challenge is not just for our Dynasty series, so keep an eye out for our fake punt in this video, and the ending is a surprise. If you want to know what college football will look like in 2024, it's going to be really different without seeing old Natty Nick on the sideline for the time. I've been watching college football since I was 7 years old. That 2007 season is probably why I like college football and I'm so passionate about it today. Week 1 App State beat number 5 Michigan in Ann Arbor. Later that season, Nick Saban in his first season as Bama's head coach lost to the University of Louisiana at Monroe. And there were so many insane upsets that season. LSU was upset by Kentucky and Arkansas. That season has still won the BCS, which is insane. But before all of that, Nick Saban was the coach at LSU. And I knew that at a young age, but I didn't really know what that meant until my parents kind of started breaking it down for me. Pretty much, he was the coach at LSU. He left to go to the pros and it didn't really work out, so then he goes to LSU's rival Alabama. And that's just kind of how they see it. And that's how I saw it for a very long time. I did not like Nick Saban at all growing up. And it was probably mostly because my family was either Georgia or LSU fans, and I was kind of right in the middle of that, you know? Um, I grew up in Georgia, and that was the only football team that I had ever heard of was the dogs, them, them dogs, you know, not these purple dogs, but them Georgia Bulldogs, ooh, 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 ooh. stick them, like that kind of dog, but, um, I digress, you know, Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide went on to win six national championships after that 2000 season, 2007 season, and I did not like that at all, you know, I, it took me a while to respect what Nick Saban was doing down there in Alabama. And um, that's really what the main change is going to be this season. It's like he's dominated ever since he's been there. And now, obviously, there, it's going to be a different look Alabama. But the race for the national championship is more wide open than it's ever been. Especially with 12-team playoffs, all these NIL deals, and these crazy conference changes and super conferences. Like, I think that needs to be fixed. They're gonna have to fix that because you can't have a conference matchup in the Atlantic Coastal Conference and you have your Atlantic Coast team traveling all the way across the country to play against a Pacific Coast team that's a conference matchup. It just makes no sense and they gotta fix that up because NFL teams struggle week to week whenever they're traveling across country because you still have to fly you still have to practice and it's just taxing on the body to do all of that especially when you fly someplace like Denver and it's freezing cold and then you go down to Miami the next week and it's just really weird with traveling football and I understand that they're getting paid now they should have to deal with that and that's fair but it's just so weird seeing these conferences shake up like this and I think that's the one thing they gotta fix. Other than that, I think college football is in a great place, even with, you know, the GOAT leaving, which he has been the GOAT. You know, nobody's really dominated the sport like he has in this day and age. Nick Saban's gonna be missed by Bama fans, but Nick Saban taught me a great, valuable lesson in life that not many other people did, and that's that you cannot win them all. All right, and that's perfect timing. You see me throw a pick here with Penix. I'm not making him look great, you know. Um, <laughs> I throw it right to him there. I completely missed the linebacker. He's definitely up under that play waiting to pick that off. I should have thrown it to somebody else. But we get a nice goal line stand here, and we force Alabama to kick a field goal, which is huge. And going into the second half, obviously, you see we take down Milrow. We're not going to show you the field goal. We'll go ahead and get into the second half of action here. But that's the main thing I wanted to talk about, especially with 
the race for the national championship being that wide open, um, you've already seen Michigan win a national championship for the first time in a very long time. And Georgia won back-to-back -back titles. They hadn't won a national championship since the 80s. And it's just crazy how many teams have a chance. And all I hear is we're not getting enough money. We're not getting enough money from our fans. Like, yo, you got to step in to the stadium with your guys and you know like Kentucky has had some great players and they've had a rough draw playing Georgia in Athens two years in a row and that's tough you know but at the same time they've gone into Athens with a good football team and good players and they have not been com competitive at all so that's something that these teams that are kind of lower like I'd like to see Washington State contend in more of their games, be a little bit more competitive, especially Colorado. I mean, Prime's got to improve this season, you know. So it's going to be a really exciting season. I think we're going to see some crazy upsets. We saw some crazy upsets this season, and that's why I wanted to get into college football revamped videos on YouTube is because I think that the college football – scene and the whole landscape of the sport for college NCAA you can say what you want about them as an organization but when it comes to just making videos on YouTube with college football teams playing against each other there's so many different fan bases that love these different uniforms going against each other these players that we've grown to love and it is weird seeing all these transfers and you're not going to see traditional true like NCAA football 2025 because it's just too hard to get everything perfect like that but I try and make a quality video for everybody every time I post it and let me know how you what you think about my mic quality this time that's really why it took me so long to post this video is because I was trying to get so many things right with my mic quality my transitions and my editing and that was an insane throw right there a Tebow-esque jump pass from the lefty Michael Penix right to his man, wide receiver one, Roma Dunes. That's insane. Like, they review this, and I don't know why. I guess it's because it's on the line of scrimmage and it's not in the end zone, but this is a crazy play. And you're going to see Alabama. We just can't stop them. They're, I started playing some good defense in the second half, but they just take control. Like, they're running the ball with their RB2. They're throwing the ball. I can't cover them. The one time, the only way I can succeed on defense is by stopping them in the backfield. But then they'll just convert on a third and long. And it was such a headache. But we get them here, and we force some field goals to make this game so much closer than it should have been with all the mistakes that I've made. Get them to kick a field goal. Now we get the ball back. Game is tied. We find Rome. He's on the sideline. And it's looking like we have a chance to take the lead here. All right? We're going to throw the ball downfield. And Johnson, for whatever reason, the game just does not want us to catch that pass. So we're going to see if we can convert on third and eight right here. And I get hit. Lucky it's not a fumble. It's incomplete. McKinstry makes a great play. Watch number one in white. Here's the fake. We roll out with McAllister. He makes a move on McKinstry, but McKinstry comes back and strips it, and Downs is there for the recovery. And at this point, I'm thinking, you know what? We flip the field with our punter. That's his whole job. He couldn't get the first down and the ball secured, but we can at least stop them and try and force overtime. But... Milrow has all day to throw, and I don't put enough pressure on him, and he finds his man, uh, Jermaine Burton, on the sideline. We can ice the kicker, and that's all we can do. Watch it go through in slow motion. And that's the whole point of this video, is that bad things will happen for weird reasons at the worst times, and you can't win them all. You just can't. All right, that's what Bama football has taught me with Nick Saban and what I love is that these Bama fans now will learn that you just can't win them all you know and I do think Kalen DeBoer will be a good coach but I do not think this will be the same Bama team 
but I'm excited to see what this next college football season holds for us all. And if you like this video, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below what you liked about it. And as always, y'all stay blessed.